Welcome once again to Zone MMA, Sean O'Connell, Dan Hardy. Um, I want to do a little, have a little fun, all right? Three things I found on the internet that I thought were interesting. Are you willing to play this game with me, Dan Hardy? Always, my friend. I'm, I'm happy to take your lead. Okay. Number one for me, you know, I'll go from three to one. I don't want to, I don't want to start with the most exciting things. I'll go from three to one. All right. Uh, three. A viral moment from this past weekend's UFC for all the wrong reasons. Uh, Chelsea Chandler sprinting directly away from Dumont, like running. And the, the camera angle was so perfect because if that we had seen that from the side, we would laugh at it. But the fact that she was running head on toward the camera <laughs> and opponent in chase, like something out of a movie. We've all been in situations inside of an octagon, inside of a smart cage, you know, on the regional scene, in boxing rings, wherever, where your footwork gets a little out of sorts and you're not looking great in the fight and you have these embarrassing, oh man, I can't believe I, I crossed over, I fell down there, I slipped, whatever. But this moment, it's just so unflattering for Chelsea Chandler. What'd you think? Yeah, it, it was a weird situation. I mean, I, I was trying to decide when I started seeing the memes popping up on, on the internet, I, I was trying to decide whether it's worse to get caught with a really big shot and take off sprinting as fast as you can at the fence or whether you run out of gas and you're doing like a steady jog around the outside of the perimeter staring at the clock. I, I don't know what's worse. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of logic involved in getting hit with a big shot and sprinting out of range as quick as possible. But then, you know, <laughs> Dumont gave chase pretty quickly and all of a sudden the octagon's very small. It, it, it was a weird thing. I, I wonder whether she was, you know, fully aware of what was going on because, you know, sometimes your brain can get a bit scrambled and, uh, you know, <laughs> when you take a big shot, you don't always necessarily know what's going on. Or, you know, same when you get choked out, you can kind of wake up and keep fighting the referee. We see that sometimes. And, and to be fair, right, this is not the first time we've seen it. There, there's been plenty of situations where fighters just, they go from fight to flight and just run away. Uh, it just was a viral moment that it happened to be a spectacular camera angle and an interesting little thing on the internet that I found this week. Uh, Chelsea, it's going to be on the not so hot highlights for a long time. So just uh, just get ready to see it over and over and over again. All right, number two for me. The rumor mill started turning this past weekend in mixed martial arts that Ronda Rousey was eyeing a return. It's been a while for Ronda Rousey. And obviously she is just this incredible pioneer in women's mixed martial arts. She really brought women's mixed martial arts to the mainstream. I don't think if there's no Ronda Rousey that uh, the UFC adopts the women's weight classes when they did. Her place in the pantheon of great fighters is pretty secure because of what she represents. Do you want to see Ronda Rousey in competition again? And do you think we will? Um, no and no I don't think I don't feel, even feel like it was a, a real rumor I can imagine she woke up and you know that the next morning she sat there drinking a coffee scrolling through the headlines and she's like <laughs> what no chance like come on she's a she's a WWE star she's she's loving doing that I mean I think really of course you know she was she was amazing at combat sports you know judo in particular but um, I always felt like pro wrestling was her thing you know I actually went to see her once she was uh, when she was living in Venice Beach and, you know, she was sat watching pro wrestling when I got there. And, and, you know, the whole time it was just, it was on all the time. It's like, like you could tell her and her friends, you know, she had the, 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 the four horse women of the apocalypse, were they called. Like they, they just love pro wrestling. And I think she's in the right place for herself now. And, you know, also MMA's moved on. You know, if Ronda did come back, it would have to be against like a Holly Holm or a Misha Tate just to kind of, you know, just to kind of have an even and fair matchup that, that would be of interest to the fans. But the, uh, the 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 divisions right now are just you know bantamweight or featherweight, which I heard was another rumor around her returning. You know maybe at featherweight, like and, unless she wants to take on Kayla Harrison, I, I don't think it's 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 a, it's a wise thing to do to come back at all. To be honest, yeah, if it was a possibility that she could take on Kayla Harrison, I would say yes because there are levels to everything, right? And the levels to the judo that made Ronda so good versus Kayla Harrison's judo, it's like not on the same planet, and it would be really cool to see that juxtaposition. Um, but I, I'm with you. I, I don't think we'll see it, and I don't really want to see it either. Not because I don't think Ronda would be interesting and would be fun to watch again, but because 
I think Ronda has done what so few mixed martial artists have had an easy time doing in retiring with with some amount of grace and the right amount of like success post MMA career, right? She is a star in another industry. She dabbled in the movies and that kind of thing. And, and she's kind of farm. Like she literally farms and raises cattle now. They they've they've lived the dream. She has lived the dream and, and I don't want to see her come back again and get knocked out again and have it be this cautionary tale of like, hey, when it's over, you got to let it be over. Rhonda has successfully transitioned out of mixed martial arts to what, at least from, you know, external appearances, seems like a fulfilling and successful post-fight life. So no Rhonda Rousey for me. Not back in the octagon or anywhere else. Unless the caveat, she can fight Kayla Harris. And then number one, the number one most interesting thing that I found on the internet, I didn't have to go far. It was on my friend Dan Hardy's Instagram page. A little bit cryptic for me, Dan. <laughs> a picture of you landing a beautiful left hook and some caption about bringing it back. You want to explain? You know, I, I, I was I was in Berlin seeing some fantastic left hooks land, particularly Ali Taleb. You know, I mean, I've been playing that that uh, that left hook in my head over and over again. And then I've just spent the weekend at the Four Nations watching a whole bunch of young fighters, you know, go through the the, the tournament and and win gold medals and stuff. And then I hear that somebody has been calling my name to the PFL. So, um, yeah, certainly I got that little, you know, the the tingle up my spine and that that drive to start training again. So, uh, I. I I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I'm not mentioning any names because, uh, you know, because th that would be, you know, putting the, the, the horse before the, the cart before the horse, I would say. He's had a couple of contracts with my name on before. So we'll see if the one that says mixed martial arts will get signed. But the boxing ones didn't. Um, and we'll see. I mean, he, he's been posting stuff on his Instagram as well. I've been looking and he's like, you know, talking about what goes on in the dark, you know, comes to light or something, something, whatever. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I'm I'm questioning whether it's actually going to come about. But I would be ready for it. You uh, you you can be certainly assured of that. And uh, you know, maybe people don't want to see Ronda Rousey back in there. Maybe people don't want to see me back in there. But I love fighting, and I'm never retiring. <laughs> and if the opponent's right, and if the opportunity's right, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, yeah I'm gonna put someone to sleep. Okay, so the possibility of Dan Hardy fighting, and you're not going to fight anywhere besides the PFL Smart Cage. Give me a percentage. Are we at, this is a 50-50 proposition right now? This is 90% there? Can you even share at this point? I, I need to have a couple more conversations. I know Peter Moore is calling me this week and we're going to have a chat about the future, but look, you know, I, I mean, I'm on, I'm on board with the PFL through and through, you know, you know, for for PFL Europe, making sure that the cards are are looking good for the fans, coming over there and working alongside you, great broadcasting team, and and adding a little something to the the commentary, and you know if there's an opportunity to strap on some of those gloves and step into the smart cage, I mean, you you've done it, you love it, you know it, it it's a lot of fun, isn't it? It's it, I, I would love to do it, and uh, and I think if the opponent's right, the opportunity's right. And uh, certainly, you know, with the with the growth of the PFL right now and the, uh, you know, the shows that we've got coming up next year, um, I would certainly like to be a part of one of those shows. And and there's nothing more exciting than someone calling you out. Right. It, it just it just gets you going, gets you ready for training. So, uh, I mean, you know, it's 7 p.m. now. I'm going to do a training session after we finish recording this. And yeah, I'm I'm underway. My, my mind has already switched over to training camp. There's nothing I can do about it now. I'm just hoping that I get a contract through soon with his name on it and we can make it official. And then once it's official, it can be public and then it can't back out. And uh, and that's when the, the excitement really starts. As a director of fighter operations in PFL Europe, you know very well that even after fights are official, people can back out. Okay, It happens all the time. <laughs> Uh, there might, okay, last question on this. I'll stop. I'll, I'll let things flesh out. Are you tough enough to be on the commentary team, helping us with the telestrations and walking us through replays and fight the same night? Because that's the real test of are you a badass? You know I am. I I'm even going to do a big a big breakdown on, on the screen beforehand as well. I'll break down what I do <laughs> terribly and what he does terribly. We'll have a good laugh about it. We'll play low light reels of both of us. 
yeah, you know, I can do that. I might even have one of the, you know, like the false seams down my down my suit jacket, so I can just <clears throat> and just step straight into the the uh, the smart Perfect. Kit. The tearaway suit. I, I love, love it. it. All right. Well, the outlaw back in the smart cage in competition. I like it. That's that was the number one thing I found on the internet. Uh, honorable it. mention. Okay, I'm going to do one more honorable mention. We can cut this up however we want it to. Another rumor that I don't think is really a rumor. I think this is this is actually happening, right? GSP, George St. Pierre. For a lot of people, he's the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. He's certainly in the conversation, even if you don't put him at number one. GSP looking to return to competition. Not in mixed martial arts, but in a grappling match specifically. I love this. Uh, he obviously was an incredible grappler uh, to go along with every other incredible skill set he had. Who do you want to see GSP grapple against in this fight pass invitational or whatever it is that he ends up on? Wow, I mean, that, that's a good question. You know, I, I would love to see him, you know, grapple against another really good MMA grappler. I mean, there are a lot of good options, to be honest. You know, Damian Meyer would be a really good choice. Gunnar Nelson would be a really interesting choice. You know, someone someone that would, uh, even Jake Shields, although I'm sure that GSP and Jake Shields have... Uh, of uh, you know the, 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 they've trained together in the past I, I i think you know any of those individuals would be a really good matchup the thing is with gsp you know no matter what he does is he, he takes it 100 percent seriously he's got john danaher around him all the time he's been training with gordon ryan for years like i think we would see a, a new level to gsp's grappling if he didn't have mma and the fence and striking to take into account you know, I I think he's and he still looks like an incredible athlete. You know, you see him working out all the time on his Instagram. I would love to see him back in competition. You know, just as a as a you know, to, just to inspire the next generations and and see what he's capable of at, at this age. I think we'd all be very surprised. I want we're ne we were never going to get it in mixed martial arts. I want it in a grappling. I want GSP versus Khabib. That's that's the grappling match I want. I think GSP wins it, right? I think it sparks a new conversation. Uh, I think that maybe it drives somebody like Khabib Nurmagomedov, who still has plenty of gas left in the tank. If he loses in that kind of competition, maybe goes back and talks to his mom again and says, hey, what do you think? Is it all right if I uh, rescind my vow to not fight again and we can can do this? Like I, That's the, the matchup I want to see because it's two guys who were so dominant – um, in their runs, and and you heard, you know, like the name would be thrown at GSP, and he'd say, "Oh, that Habib, that would be an interesting comp. That that that's one I would think about, right?" And same thing for Habib. What about GSP? And he was just like, "Yeah, I, I I'll smash him like I smash. I just want to see it." And you're not going to get it in a fight, so let's get it in a grappling match because I think you could make it happen. Probably cost yeah. you a lot of money, but it's not my money to spend. So. <laughs> so, so you don't mind you know that's a good shout i wouldn't even mind seeing him against makachev to be honest you know that'd be a, that'd be an interesting one as well um yeah yeah of, of course you know khabib is the right one i just i just don't ever see him coming back to competition not, not for anything at this stage i feel like he's you know he's fully moved past his competitive you know time in his career even even if you know if it was grappling or wrestling especially against someone like gsp who you know he's gonna have a a, a size advantage no doubt and you know, a body composition advantage at this stage as well, by the look <laughs> of it. You know, I mean, it's just, you, it's not taking nothing away from Khabib, but, you know, GSP is in fantastic shape and, and just, he's still, you know, he's just grinding every day, you know, ice baths and gymnastics and, you know, training with some, some absolute sharks. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested to see him return against whoever. Even, you know, even someone fun like Chael Sonnen, just to get the trash talking going, would be interesting. Uh, it would be really cool to see GSP go up against, like, a light heavyweight or a heavyweight. Because that's, you know, we don't get the open weight Grand Prix in mixed martial arts anymore. My my dream of an open weight MMA World Cup will never happen because of the tribalism of the organizations. But I would absolutely love to see GSP in that kind of, like, grappling absolute style where the weight class doesn't matter. Because we view, a lot of us view him as not only a great fighter, maybe the greatest of fighters, but I think he's a true martial artist, right? Like GSP, if he decides that he's going to be a professional grappler now, we're going to look at him and be like, this guy's potential as a grappler is unlimited. 
So let's see what he can do. And and then maybe someday, you know, you see him against a Gordon Ryan, who's the consensus number one grappler in the world. There's a huge size disparity between those guys, but like because we want to see GSP versus another grappling heavy fighter, I wouldn't mind if it was a heavyweight or a light heavyweight. For him, he's so good that GSP and the questions we have about who he can be, it transcends weight class because he came out of retirement and and won the middleweight belt and then was just like, ha, told you guys, see you later. Like, doesn't bother GSP. Size, size doesn't matter for someone like that. 